I am all for anything that works. I am a whore for results, but eventually the buck's going to stop. So when something's going well, you got to milk it. You got to get your gains. But as you get, you know, it's one of those things at one time, an old lifting partner of mine, um, I heard, you know, someone I, we were training with missed a 700 pound deadlift on grip. He started laughing. He said, now you're strong enough to have a grip problem. Well, if you keep training hard and doing meat after meat, eventually you're going to get strong enough where lifestyle is going to matter a ton. So today we're going to talk about the difference between smart training that's real and fake smart training. So smart training that is real or smart training that's fake is, oh, I got a heavy single scheduled for squat, but after that heavy single, you're supposed to hit your accessory work, your compensatory acceleration work and all that stuff. And you skip it, you know, because that's a smart thing to do, quote unquote. Oh, you know, I didn't want to hit that, you know, that last set of the five sets of five just because, you know, I thought my form could break out. You know damn well your form was going to break down. You just don't want to push it to the next level. That is not smart training. That is virtue signaling. And worse about that virtue signaling is this is an individual sport. You're not like part of some virtue signaling cause. You're literally virtue signaling to yourself to lie to yourself. That is not psychologically a good place to be in. So that is the fake smart training. That's why a lot of people don't get strong. I've had some, you know, intense consultations with people. And they're starting to, I'm like, dude, thinking like, dang, I ought to be, cons- you know, we ought to flip roles here. I mean, this person's a genius. So, you know, all they know, I mean, so then, I, you know, finally get to what, what are you lifting? Because it's about getting their strength up. And it's like, you know, the way, you know, the guy literally, I'm thinking of somebody, I'm not going to be mean, but I'll just say this. He weighed over 200 pounds, able-bodied male in his 30s. And he said his bench was 235. I'm like, this guy, like, quoting, like, every Russian periodization model, you know, in the last hundred years, and all this, and all these studies, and this and that, is benching 235? You know, everybody's got to start somewhere, and I commend him for, you know, going out and talking to me, but honestly, he got this bench up over 300 pretty quick, started training with me, and got onto his case, and it was basically, like, just removing that, you know, that smart training mentality, okay? That's one way. Real smart training is when you get to that next higher level, you realize there's a difference between meat prep mentality and off-season mentality, okay? So meat, and that's what, what's happened with Andrew here. He's done eight meats in the last three years. The buck stopped. You know, we're no longer, gonna, he kind of burned out here. And we knew this would happen eventually. Just, this is when it happened. Switch gears. Again, like I said, I'm not, I don't subscribe to one way of doing things. We will push it as far as we can with an intelligent reason. So, you know, saw some, you know, he's burning out. Talked to him about maybe pull, you know, not doing a meet we had talked about, hitting some off-season training, and really had a long conversation about the lifestyle, because I think that's where Andrew, he get, he Andrew's an iron monk focused year round. But I don't want he doesn't need to be an iron monk in the iron monastery year round. At some point, he just needs to be you know, the guy that shows up to you know, the congregation on Sunday and doesn't really pay attention the rest of the week. You know that in all seriousness, that's how he needs to be. So what am I talking about here? I'm talking about meat prep is focused, intense training lifestyle. You have to hit your food. You don't go out, you know, you don't go out and meet fast women, drink whiskey and smoke cigars. You know, the checker at, you know, Sam's Club that you've been eyeing wants to go two-stepping on the long neck. And, but you ain't going. You got to meet. That is the prep mentality, you know. Everything focuses on that meat. So when I used to train, you know, I remember being super stressed out about squat and deadlift workouts on Saturday, dude, heavy together. And I get super stressed out about it. But in a good way, I was excited about it, but I knew I had to hit it. So everything I'm doing is revolving around that upcoming workout. That is meat, prep, meat, prep mentality. So then I switched to doing bodybuilding with Brian Dobson. We trained physically so much harder. If you could do the metabolic energy expenditure, it would be fascinating to know how much more we were doing. And it was very hard work. However, all these drop sets and stuff, it wasn't like I was just focusing on squatting or lifting some huge weight. It was working hard in the gym. And that's the, what I'm talking about. You want to work your ass off in off season, but there has to be a period of time where the rest of your life doesn't revolve around the gym. You go in there, you hit it as hard as you can. And, and drop it. You know, I've, I always get fascinated when I talk to people about their strength gains. Hey, what'd you hit like at the last meet? Oh, I got to check. Like, how do you not know that? 
Well, you, it's almost good to take a, a, a page out of their book at some point during the off season. It's about mental decompression. So there, you know, eventually, if you keep doing this, you structure. You can't outrun the structural damage of meat preps. That is a fact. You can't outrun the mental damage of constant meat preps. That's a fact. That's why you see people burn out. People that lift for Instagram hunts just max out all the time. Eventually, they will burn out. Go back and look at you know how long Facebook memories from ten years ago. How many of these people are still doing it kind of thing? So you have Andrews competed eight times in the la- in the last three years. He's over two thousand. He's finally to that point where I had to get him to adopt that off season mentality. Everybody will hit it for some point. And as long as you're not doing anything reckless, I say you milk this as long as you can. I'm speaking purely to advanced lifters here, but you you will get to that point. And if you don't, I don't know why the hell you're powerless <laughs> in the first place. If you're doing it for years on end and not getting any better, everybody's going to get there eventually. And it's not just the structural damage from the weight you're lifting, but it's your central nervous system. Smart training is knowing when you morph from that you know heap-seeking missile that only cares about powerlifting to that guy that busts their ass in the gym but doesn't really like go crazy about it. And of course, there's a time for focus off-season where you're actually trying to put on muscle and you get your lifestyle revolved, but you can't do that all the time. So sometimes, you know, someone aggressive like this, we have to actually dial them back. So I'm going to put a link in the description at the, at the bottom of this video. It is for my new tactical powerlifting program. However, keep in mind that this is not an off-season program. If you're burning out doing meat after meat, Obviously, I'd love the business, you know, I want to put some dead presents in the pockets, but I don't want you to burn out. So this is for meat prep getting stronger. Thank you.